hey guys welcome back to the second part of our thread safety video so if you haven't checked out the first one please do so because this is a continuation video and in this video we will cover race condition read modify write scenario and couple of other things which can go wrong in a multi-threaded program so let's get started so what is race condition race condition is another problem or scenario which comes under the umbrella of thread safety so in a concurrent program we know when we have multiple threads they all run concurrently okay so they are all running concurrently and sometimes even in parallel depending on the availability of the cpu core so as long as they are working on two different things it doesn't matter okay so there are no problems as long as they both are working let's say there are two threads so as long as they are working on two different things and there is no overlap then there is nothing to worry about but what happens when they are working on the same thing as we covered in the last video shared in mutable state and we saw a demo on the lost updates where they were accessing the same variable so what happens when there are multiple threads they all are running concurrently and they try to access the same resource so there is a race between those threads and the outcome of the program or the outcome of the computation depends on the order of execution of threads which thread executed first and what operation did it perform so there is a race of operation there is a race of threads and the outcome in this case will depend on which thread won the race and then there could be the reordering of statements and interleaving of threads we have covered all these details so when multiple threads are working on the same resource and they are trying to access the same resource and when the outcome of the program depends on the order of execution of threads then this condition is called the race condition so for example suppose there are two threads and they both are checking if a certain file exists and if not the thread will create the file so what happens when both the threads decide to create a file because for example at time t1 the file did not exist they both check the file that it doesn't exist so they both decide to create a new file so this is an example of race condition or what happens when there are multiple threads and they are incrementing the same variable okay so that is another example of race condition although the second example closely relates to the data race because here multiple threads are accessing the same variable at the same time now we also talked about as long as the operations are read only there is no impact but when multiple threads are accessing the same variable at the same time and at least one of them is writing to it that means it's an update operation it is mutating okay then this is called data race now how do you identify if a piece of code that you are writing or maybe working on is prone to race condition so there are two hints always check for these two conditions check then act read modify and write so for example if a piece of code is making a decision it is checking something checking a condition and depending on the condition it is acting it is making a decision so if that piece of logic can be categorized as check then act scenario then this is prone to race condition okay similarly if there is another logic which is implemented as read modify write so sometimes we read a value okay and depending on the condition then we modify the value and we want to write the update whether it is a variable or the database so if you find these conditions if you find these patterns check then act or read modify and write then always be careful that you need to synchronize the access correctly otherwise it will face a race condition let's see a quick example of this let's see this thing in action so for example this is the class that we discussed in the last video that there is one integer holder class it has a single instance holder and both the threads are working on the same object and both are trying to update the same internal state or same internal variable of the holder class which is some value because t1 and t2 both are calling update value the only difference is t1 is passing the value 1 and t2 is passing the value 2 and we saw in the last video how the update of t1 got lost because at the same time t2 performed the update so this is an example of lost update or this you can say is an example of data race because here both the threads are trying to access and update the same variable via holder class now suppose there is a piece of logic in thread one that does something like this if holder dot get value equals to one then do something so now what is happening here because t1 updated the value to 1 so it is expecting that it will get the value 1 
So now this is checking a condition that if the value is still one, then do something. And because Steven did the update here, so it will expect that the value will remain one and it will be able to execute this piece of code. But we already know due to the lost update or due to the concurrent access, what will happen that T2 will get a chance in this particular case because of this delay and T2 will update the value to two. So this is an example of check then act. Why? Because here the code is checking a condition and depending on the condition, it is then taking an action. Now, if you try to understand how this can cause inconsistencies, observe that in this check then act condition, thread T1 will check if the condition is one. Suppose thread T1 got the chance to update the value. So it will see the value one and this condition will become true. But there is a possibility that before thread T1 executes this decision box, thread T2 will update the value to two. Okay. So although the condition was true at time T1, but by the time thread T1 executes this code, the value got updated to two. So that is now inconsistent when this condition was evaluated by thread T1. So this is an example of race condition because the value was one here, but it got changed between this line and this line, which is entirely possible in a multi-threaded program. Now let's see another example of race condition. So suppose in the same way, thread T1 is checking a condition like this one, get some value. If this is one, then holder dot update value to three. Okay. This is an example of read, modify and write. Okay. Now what thread T1 is doing, it is first reading the value. Okay. Then checking a condition and then it is modifying the value. So this is a write operation. But if you notice these operations are split into different steps, check, then act, similarly read, modify and then write. So there are multiple operations that a thread is trying to perform here. Now similar to the check then act condition, what can happen? Maybe the value was one here. So this condition evaluates to true. But before T1 calls this piece of code, T2 will update the value to two. Okay. So this condition is kind of inconsistent because this decision was made upon this condition that the value was one. But in the meantime, the value got changed to two. All right. So these are examples of race conditions. Always look for the pattern check then act and read, modify and write. Wherever you see it in a concurrent program, always be careful that this can be a race condition. Now let's move on. Next, we will cover atomicity and visibility. First, let's focus on the atomicity. So what is atomicity? If you know the ACID properties in a relational database, then it is pretty similar to that atomicity. What atomicity says that operations are always performed as a single and indivisible step. So that means you cannot divide the operation further. This is the smallest unit of the operation that will be completed as a unit. So either it completes entirely successfully or it does not happen at all. There is no intermediate state in case of atomicity. So let's see how atomicity or the lack of atomicity impacts the threat safety. So we'll go back to the previous example. Here it is. So here, if you remember the check then act condition and read modify write condition, we covered that this is an example of race condition. And we covered how this condition could be true here. But before this line gets executed, maybe this piece of code by T2 will be executed by JVM and CPU. So the value will no longer be one here as well. Now, why this could happen? Because if you see this piece of code is not atomic. All right. First, this line will be executed, then this line will be executed. Now, it is entirely possible that some other piece of code in some other thread can execute in between these two lines. So that means the operation here is divided into two steps. The first step is this one and the second step is this one. And similarly, if you see this example, read, modify and write. So the first step is this condition. Step one is to check this condition. Then step two is to update the value. Now this could happen that another operation or another line of code by thread T2 will be executed in between step one and step two. And this can happen because these two operations are not atomic. They are not executed as a single unit. 
and that's how atomicity impacts the thread safety especially in a concurrent program let me remove everything and uh, let's see how making a piece of code atomic can solve the race conditions so for example in this particular case if we make this code atomic as a single unit okay so that means when jvm executes this line of thread t1 we can be sure that this whole block will be executed in one go this is a single step so first it will check the condition that if the value is one it will then execute this piece of code in a single step okay so there is no more divisions it cannot be broken into further steps what that means is there is no chance of something else getting executed in between so this block will be executed as a unit that will make sure that if this condition is true, this decision will remain consistent with this condition. And similarly, in the case of read, modify and write, if we make this block atomic as a single unit, then that means this condition will be checked first. If this is true, the value will be updated to three. There is no chance of other code getting executed in between. So that is the concept of atomicity. When we make these statements or the operations atomic, they are executed as a single unit and JVM will not reorder or will not split these statements into further steps. Now let's move on and try to understand the visibility. First of all, how do we define the visibility in a concurrent program? In a concurrent program, visibility is the ability of a thread to see the most recent changes made to one of the shared variables or shared objects by other threads. So what that means is suppose there are two threads T1 and T2 and they were working on the common object so this object is shared and the value was v1 okay so t1 knows the value is v1 and similarly t2 also knows the value is v1 this is v1 okay now suppose what t2 does it updated the value there was an update operation and the updated value is v2 now the thing is whether or not t1 reads the updated value v2 comes under the concept of visibility so visibility says that threads should see the most recent update of the common shared value okay in case changes are made by some other objects so if t2 updated the value from v1 to v2 and then if t1 reads the value of this common object it should get the value v2 but this is not always possible it doesn't happen always in a concurrent program let's understand why this could happen so we know there are many caches caching is everywhere so for example we have the cpu then in CPU, uh, we have caches like L1, L2, and L3. Okay, then there is main memory. Okay, and uh, suppose there is heap as well, Java heap, because all objects will be stored on the heap. And we also know in Java, threads have their stack memory. So each thread has its own stack memory. Okay, and this stack memory is used to store the local variables, the method call frames, stack frames, and so on. All right. Now let's say this is thread T1 and this is thread T2 and there is a common object which is available on the heap. Now what will happen? Let's say this common object is shared among T1 and T2. So let's say T1 reads the value and it sees the value is V1. Now this V1 value will be stored in the stack memory. You can say this is the local cache of thread T1. And similarly, when T2 reads the value, the value v1 will be stored in the stack memory of t2 now these value can be cached now suppose after some time t2 decides to make an update maybe it wants to change the value from v1 to v2 now how this can happen t2 will execute some piece of code and we know this piece of code will be executed by cpu ultimately with the help of jvm all right now possibility number one is the value is updated to let's say v2 but this is cached in one of these caches okay so although t2 made the update to v1 but this value is cached here this update is not made to the heap memory yet now in the meantime if t1 reads the value it will still see the value v1 which is not v2 so this is one possibility all right Second possibility is that this value is written to the main memory. Okay, so this value is written to the main memory and uh, the local cache of T2, the stack memory is also updated. So now the new value is V2 in stack memory of T2, but T1 
even cache even stack memory is still not updated not refreshed so what will happen even though the value is written to the main memory t2 is still getting the value v1 because this value is cached here in the stack memory now this could happen that even if the update is made by one thread all the other threads maybe there are t1 t4 and t5 will still see the old value or maybe t1 and t4 will see the new value but t5 will still see the old value all these things are possible because there are so many caches and caches are refreshed as and when required depending on the runtime condition now can we solve this problem of course we can solve this problem by using the features provided in the jdk so for example there are things provided in the jdk that if we use them will guarantee that the value will always be refreshed and whoever is reading the value will always see the updated value okay so that is the problem of visibility now coming back to this code example suppose in this case we have the common integer holder which has an integer variable some value and the same object is being shared across t1 and t2 okay so they are working on the same object now what is happening in this example that thread t2 is updating the value to 2 all right so earlier it was 0 but now it will be changed to 2 what t1 is doing independently it is running independently and t2 is checking if the get some value is 2 so in this case one thread is updating the value and another thread is reading the value now in this case if you are not aware of let's say concurrent problems then you will expect that of course the value will be 2 and the value is 2 will be printed but as we covered it could happen that even though the update was made by thread t2 thread t1 can still see the old value so in this case this condition will become false and it will still print don't know the value because the update is not yet visible to thread t1 okay so that is the problem of visibility coming back to the slides we have covered atomicity and visibility now we are very close to the end we have covered all the fundamental aspects of thread safety all the common and popular problems and patterns that we often see in a concurrent program so by now you should be comfortable with the concepts at least from the theory perspective and in upcoming videos we will see the hands-on and before we close here is a quick summary and here you can see what problems can be solved by which concurrent utility so over here you can see top three are from the last video when we covered the shared and mutable state and we said don't share the state if possible don't mutate the state if possible and let's say if you have to share and mutate then protect the access so talking about the first one how can we protect or how can we not share the state well we can use the private methods local variables and thread local which is provided by java to implement the logic in such a way that we don't share the state we can use the concepts of immutability we can design the immutable classes in such a way that we can be sure that the state will not be mutated so don't mutate the state then we have thread safe collections and synchronization by using synchronized keywords and logs and by using them we can implement solutions in such a way that let's say if we have to mutate the shared state then we can protect the access we can synchronize the access talking about the atomicity which we covered as part of the race condition there are atomic package in the concurrent package we can use utilities like atomic integer atomic boolean and then we have plain old synchronized keyword and logs and by using them we can design or we can implement an atomic block that will be executed as a unit okay so using this way we can avoid the race conditions and for visibility we again have something called volatile variables and of course the synchronization using logs and everything that will make sure that the changes made to one variable will be visible to other threads so you can see it all comes under thread safety no matter which concurrent api or utility you are using it is ultimately trying to avoid or solve some kind of thread safety problem so it is very important that you understand the fundamental problems before deep diving into the implementation now that we have covered the fundamental things from theory perspective from the next video we will start covering the implementation details how can we use these utilities so i will see you in the next video thanks for watching